best advice that I got was this. Um, hey, man, just keep the baby alive. Ah, the wise words of Dax McCarty. Seuss, that was exactly <gasps> one beautiful year ago. Happy Jill? anniversary, my dear, Happy dear friend. Happy anniversary, one year of the call-up with you, my beautiful friend. And I can't believe they are still letting us do this. <laughs> <laughs> we have sir. Sur- we survived a season. We survived our debut. We've so far survived quarantine. <laughs> Holy moly. Guys, you are in for such a good show today. For those of you watching, oh we have nice gosh. little flags up. I, I don't know. Do people usually celebrate their first anniversary with flags? I'm not sure, but. It's a paper. Isn't first anniversary ah, paper? Paper. There Susan, it is. I sent you those flags. That's exactly what I was thinking. She did. You guys, for our Jill, paper anniversary. Jill sent me. In the mail, I got an Amazon package with the, this lovely decor, and it was for our anniversary party, and it I didn't even register. And it's brilliant on many levels. So thank you for that. I love it. I think I'm going to leave this up. It's quite festive. Uh, why not here. party? Um, and one year ago, we had our first guest ever on, Dax McCarty, who, who kept it interesting for us to start things off, but we're so grateful. And we're just, we're joking because we laughed that he was doing skin to skin with, at the time, like his three week old, Callum McCarty, who also just obviously celebrated a one Turned year one. birthday. And to be honest, I think Dax was a big, big reason, like his openness, willingness to be serious, but then also have a little bit of fun, like really helped us kick things off on the right foot. And for that, we are so grateful to Dax McCarty and just the McCarty family in general. So thank Amen. you guys so much. Um, yeah, first anniversary. Can't love couldn't them. do it without anyone but you, Susanna Collins. And on oh, today's chill. episode, we not only celebrate that, but we have on the guys from the J to Z podcast, the bromance, Zarek Valentin and Jeff Atanella, former teammates of the Timbers, Zarek now with the Houston Dynamo. And we discuss... The misunderstood Diego Chara or Chara? <laughs> Chara. We will find out. Which one is it? We will find <laughs> out. Uh, this is going to be a really, really fantastic episode, but we have some we have some here for this is that we want to get into. And the first one being this was a this was a a real lift. And it might not seem like a huge thing, but this it just for our our mental state right now was huge. So MLS announced that they are going to begin individual player workouts and teams will baby open up steps, tra- people, baby steps. So teams are going to be opening up their training facilities for individual players to come to the facility. They can engage in tra- individual, like I said, individual training. So this is not a team situation yet. And they do have to abide by all of the safety and health protocols. So they're going to have their temperature checked, all of that. But it just feels like this is that first we are we are we just made that first step we made yes. that first step back to what will be a little just idiom of normalcy and i when i saw these emails rolling through i was like oh, i mean my heart just it soared i was so excited so excited it's an emotional moment Yes. We are getting back to the MLS 2020 season, people. Yes, yes. And I and I feel optimistic as ever that Me it's too. going to happen. I feel like a season, whatever it looks like in 2020, will will happen. And this is just, you know, we just we made that first initial step. And so we are so here for that. We're going to talk to uh Zarek and Jeff a little bit more about that coming mm-hmm. up, but and what that will look like. But that's a big here for this. I know we've been trying to keep this positive. But this is a not here for dot, dot, but, dot. So don't know if you guys were keeping up with the news over uh, the weekend the last Cons- few days. I am a heavy consumer of news in quarantine. I'll tell so, you that. There is a new phenomenon that is uh, em- encroaching upon North America, and that is called the murder hornet. I'm just going to say that again. Murder Hornet. <laughs> and it is a it's a it's a Japanese hornet that is about this big and this thing has been decapitating bees and then at least 50 what? people died. I thought you were gonna least, say people. No, no. And then no. 
but 50 people a year <laughs> die in Japan. You're scaring me with the drama level of the story. Awful. It decapitates bees. It comes in and then like Whoa. senses it and it puts out a pheromone and then all its friends come in and then they decapitate like an entire Susan, I thought we were keeping bees. it up beat I know, during quarantine but I have for to here tell for this. You. You're scaring the heebie-jeebies out of me. But I have to tell you, I have not been able to stop thinking about murder hornets because they're so terrifying well, that so I have had nightmares. Summer. I have had nightmares the last two You're literally getting two eyes for you. Two nights about murder hornets. And okay. good news, now, news. As if as if the pandemic wasn't bad enough, we've got murder hornets to deal with, people. I so have two two not good, here no, for it. Two bits of good news for you. One, I talk I to you a lot. A lot, a lot. And mostly you're in your apartment. So you're gonna be you're gonna be safe from the murder hornets. Uh two, I had a friend make the joke the other night when murder hornets came up and I didn't know what the heck they were talking about. And they're like, I feel like we're in a human version of Jumanji. Like that's what 2020 <laughs> is. It literally is. Uh Sue's one of your favorite duos, probably yes. on the planet. Yeah. Sebastian Legette and Becky G. This is adorable. They surprised a nurse who is a huge Galaxy fan by just FaceTiming the woman and saying a good old fashioned thank you. It was so adorable. And she was so, she had, so she had her mask on. She had a Galaxy mask on mm. in the video if you didn't watch it. And she was just, she was so taken aback by it. And then Sebastian comes on first and then Becky comes on and she's just, she doesn't even know what to make of it. And it was just such a, ah, it was such a sweet um, and kind gesture and it meant so much to her. And it's really great because right now we're, um, we have this MLS Unites initiative and this week the initiative is MLS Unites for healthcare workers and essential workers and to express our gratitude for them. And so this is just a, a beautiful embodiment of, of that. And what a very small thing that Sebastian and Becky G can do to absolutely make the day for this incredible woman who's working so hard to, to keep everybody safe. So Oh, I love Very that. Very cool moment. Becky Glad G and Sebastian, the next thing you could probably do for the people would would be to come on the call up. <laughs> Okay, call up cares because the call up cares. Uh, so much good stuff going on right now. Big one yeah. being our guest today, the Timbers announced that their goalkeeper, Jeff Atanella, and children's book author, he donated 1,000 new copies of his book. Suze, this is for you. The Curse Ends, the story of the 2016 Chicago Cubs. Uh, he gave it to a Chicago nonprofit organization called cradles to crayons it provides children with essential items that they need to thrive at home at school and play with so many kids not going to school right now and having to rely on virtual learning and all the efforts that that takes from teachers um this is just another little assist from an mls player to just kind of make things easier for those at home especially those who maybe don't have the means to go out and buy a bunch of books so we applaud that big time that is so great so so great and and can i just say Without Please. any bias at all, not a better story to tell. <laughs> well, this is a very big day on the call up because we get two for the price of one. We have uh, Jeff Attenella from the Portland Timbers and Zarek Valentine of the Houston Dynamo. But more importantly, the partners in the J to Z podcast are podcast bros. Guys, it's a podcast party. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. This is so <laughs> exciting. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us. First first and foremost, how is everybody doing during this uh, very weird and strange, difficult time? Jeff, we'll start with you. Uh, we're doing all right. You know, it's been, uh, we have a newborn here. Well, I guess not newborn anymore. It's been a month. But that's so we're newborn. in the trenches. No, that's still that newborn. Is, yeah, yeah. You're probably right. It's been a very weird, longest, shortest month of my life. Like the concept <laughs> of time has thrown me off a lot. But, you know, we're doing all right. We're, uh, the weather's starting to get a little bit better, better in Oregon, which is nice. And so, you know, we're all good. Zarek, how you living? Listen, it's 90-something uh, and humid, and I got to pull out <laughs> back. So not too much to complain about. And the baby's taking a nap, so it's perfect. Oh, my God. What a gift. And how old is the baby? Uh, he's eight months. A lot of newborns running around the from J to Z podcast. Zarek's lucky because he's at like that perfect window where the where his son is fun, but still can't mm -hmm. move on his own. <laughs> so you just like pick him up, put him down, and have fun. 
and then you're like you're good to go. So he's at that perfect age where like you can hang out by the pool and not, hang out by the pool all day with the baby just kind of sitting in the corner. Yeah, but he's getting this like he's getting antsy and he's like wiggling and trying to crawl, but like it's like the an more army mobile. Crawl. Yeah, it's exciting though, but I think I understand what you're saying because you can literally plop him somewhere and walk away and come back and he's still pretty stable. Jim, you guys make it sound so easy. I know. All right, let's let's talk soccer for a quick second because then we know this always goes off the rails and we'll probably won't talk <laughs> soccer at exactly. all. Exactly. If you've ever listened, that's usually how these go. Um, MLS just announced that they will begin individual training sessions at the team's respective training facilities. Guys kind of practicing on their own, waving from a distance. Um, but it's a small win, some steps towards getting back to normal. Have you been over at your respective training facilities? Um, and kind of how does that feel to know that we're making one step towards getting back to whatever normal will be in 2020? Yeah, I think it's positive overall. Everyone's getting a little stir crazy. And when I say everyone, I mean everybody. So it's going to yeah. be good. And sadly, we can't kick our teammates just yet, but it's going to be one of these things where we get to go out and just just interact with people. I think that social interaction is one of the biggest things that people miss, and it's just so good for our mental health. So things like this are fantastic. For me, I'm just excited to get back. Like It'll just be good to get out of the house for a little bit. And I mean that in the nicest way to my family. <laughs> but just to like get out of the house and kind of have that area to work out on your own. And for goalies, you know, we're used to kind of just being off in the corner by ourselves anyway. So it's really not going to be, it's not going to be too different for the goalies. So for me, I'm looking forward to at least just like getting the cleats back on and getting out there. You've been, Jeff, you've been, you've been socially, you've been socially isolating your, uh, or social distancing your whole career essentially. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, somebody asked like, me, they're like, are you worried terrible. about, being, somebody asked me, are you worried about being around other, other players during games? I'm like, I'm not around anybody ever. So <laughs> <laughs> it's really not that big of a deal. And I guess it's fine. Jeff, quick question for you. I, so literally you, you had sh shoulder surgery and then the day that you were cleared to uh, do all activities was the day that the season was suspended. So that had to have been frustrating, but in a way, is there a silver lining here in that like you can really make sure that that shoulder is like 100% healed up? Yeah, I mean, I think that the silver lining is that when I come back, it's kind of uh, everybody's at an equal, everybody's dealt with the same situation. You know, when you're coming off surgery, uh, I was trying to get back before preseason so I could get preseason in, but I, I just couldn't make it back in time. So now... Whenever we get back to return to play, everybody's coming off of something so unique that we're all kind of coming back at the same level, you know. So for me, that's part of a silver lining. But at the same time, it was it was tough to work that hard and work yourself all the way back. I got like one full practice in, made a couple <laughs> saves, was actually feeling pretty good about myself. And then the next morning you get a call. It's like, hey, everybody, come to the locker room. <laughs> Things are things are about to take a pretty crazy turn, so it is what it is, right? So wild. The buzzword during quarantine has certainly been silver linings, and even while I say it, I'm like rolling my eyes sometimes. I'm like, is there one though? I don't know. I just um, never thought I'd get so used to saying the word quarantine. Like that's never been a word in my dictionary, and now it's like now my phone knows right when I go to the letter Q, it's just yeah. like boom. Oh, that's so sad. It's Q, and then the other one is unprecedented. The amount of time I've heard this damn <laughs> word unprecedented. I've heard it in unprecedented amount of times. It's just, oh, I'm, I'm over it. At UN, it just automatically autocorrect goes straight in. Something else that's unprecedented <laughs> is the amount of podcasts that have been created during <laughs> quarantine. But credit to the call up and credit to the From J to Z podcast. We were around way before the pandemic, and we have so many questions oh, for you guys. Um, obviously, now you're in different cities, so what challenges does that present? And Susan, I know the best podcasts come from the best of friends. How did the idea come about? And then the million-dollar question, who edits the thing? So I think the best, the, the silver lining to us being in different <laughs> oh, cities. Oh, gosh. During these There's unprecedented a, times, drink, drink every drink every time somebody says unprecedented or uh, silver lining. There we go. Um, is is the fact that when we were together on the same team, you know, we kind of got wrangled into Timber's specific topics. But now, considering that we're on different teams, we have we talk about different things. Um, 
there's different players, there's climates, just schedules. Um, so I think it's kind of widened our horizon a little bit and has made the act of potting a lot more fun because it's just hanging out. We'll FaceTime, then we'll record it. And it, it's just, it lasts a lot longer than the 30 minutes you might see or listen to on, on Apple or whatever podcasting streaming service you might choose to use. I really think another uh, silver lining during this unprecedented time Drink. Is I'm just going to do that on purpose for the rest of the show. <laughs> but it makes it more fun for Zarek and I because we'll be texting about anything. You know what I mean? Because our podcast isn't necessarily soccer specific. It's more whatever's going on in life, whatever funny story you have to tell about parenting that day. More of like, a, you know, come laugh at us slash with us type type deal. And we'll be texting, talking about something. And it will just be like, dude, let's just go record this on the pod, put it on the pod and have this conversation and turn it into an episode. So for that, it's been a little bit more fun because Mm -hmm. when we were in the locker room together, we had all those conversations in the locker room and we were always scrapping for ideas of things to talk about. But now it's just like, hey, I haven't talked to you all day. Today's been crazy. Let's catch up and throw it on record and see what happens. We can relate. I think that's kind of how Susan and I came about it, where like we would exchange like hilarious stories of like, oh my God, I just, this didn't happen, but I just tripped Joseph Martinez on his walkout. Like, oh, this game's not going to go well. Just stuff like that. And then we'd get home, we'd be like, you know what? People may want to hear this stuff. They may not. And then you're like, (laughs) maybe we should make it a podcast. I think we both wish you would have done that before the final. If you would have just given them a nice little like, <laughs> chop them down before oh the game, gosh. unbelievable. That would no have been nice. sabotage. Could have been a, could have been a different, a well, different result there. Who handles the technicalities? Yes. Who, who? Because we we don't. We right? do we not just do the brainless work. <laughs> Guys, who's your producer? Who's doing the editing? Uh, What's going on behind the scenes here? It's not us. Um, the funny short story was when we were playing the final. I remember walking out and being on the middle of the field and we kind of talked about this and I do my normal warm up where I get my legs, you know, loose. And I looked at one of our assistant coaches, Miles Joseph, and I said, Miles, it's really difficult for me to focus in this moment. And he was like, what do you mean? And Gio was like, his ear perked up and he like walked over like, what do you mean? Like, this is about the final. And I said, well, my best friend's standing right behind me. And they said, who do you mean? And I looked behind me and Albert Lanzillo, formerly of – MLS, formerly worked at Red Bulls. He was at Galaxy and the national team. I've known him since I've been in kindergarten, uh, is the producer, the editor and chief and one of the creative brains behind our pod that doesn't get noticed. And apparently he knows you too. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Albert. Hey, Albert. How you doing? <laughs> What's up? Yeah, so um, hey, hey. Our, my good buddy, Albert Lanzillo, uh, produces it, uh, deals with all the crappy audio, all of our hundred takes and really spruces it up and makes it, uh, you know, as pretty as possible for, for you guys to listen to. That's amazing. That's a good, I mean, that's a good friend to have. Let's be honest. We love the people behind the scenes. Yeah. Tell me about it. This coming Sunday is mother's day, which is a very special day. All the, all the mamas. Reminder, we're giving you a nice heads up. You too. That's All smart. Of the I was going to tweet something out too because people need to remember. Right? Okay. So it's a very special day. Zarek, this is going to be your wife's first Mother's Day. So I want to hear Don't from each it. of you. I know, exactly. Do not blow it, number one. But number two, what are you going to do this Mother's Day to make your wife feel extra special, especially because, you know, they're stuck with you two at home all the time now. So you got you got to really bring it. What are you going to do, Zarek? Well, you're putting me on the spot. I know. You guys look nervous. Jeez Louise. Um, But I think first and foremost, um, volunteer to do the midnight feeding is a good place to start. And have mom get a full night's sleep. Oh, that's, yeah. what, that's your Mother's Day? That's your, that's your, that's your Mother's start. Day? That's it's a, a comma. He's not done yet, right? Derek, I know you're not done. It's a <laughs> and I must oh, say that um, Liz's dad is an incredible cook. And it's really hard to live up to that. But- he makes a very good breakfast that I know that she yearns for. So I'm going to try to emulate that a little bit and then make her the one, one of the two meals that she usually requests probably for dinner. Hopefully she's not listening, but, uh, or else the surprise is ruined, but minimally those are the steps. But the, the terrible part is we've had to do her 30th birthday and now mother's day in quarantine. So like, it, it's just been really tough. But um, like I said, it's tough because for her birthday, I had all of her friends, all of her best friends do a 15 minute video where they made voice messages and videos and I put it on TV. So it's going to be really 
hard to top that, but I'm going to have to try. My idea for Mother's Day, I always just assume that for Mother's Day and just special days in general, the most time away from the chaos is, is ideal. So how can I remove her completely from pretty much the stress of the day to day? We're going to drive up to a winery that's like doing a wine box drop offs. Uh. We're going to go pick up a case of her favorite wine. I'm going to set her up in the back get like a little picnic table out and I'm going to try to get some husband, neighborhood husband friends to do the same thing oh. where they're setting up their backyards so we could turn it into like a winery. I'm going to serve her like plates of cheese and pretzel thins <gasps> and try to get a nice little Zoom call up. That's right, Zarek. You, uh, look at that face, Eric. I know. That's the bar, buddy. <laughs> That's where the bar set, my friend. That's so All Pacific right. Northwest. I love well, it. Wait, I know. If you, well, check, if you check back in with me, if I actually pulled it off successfully, that'll be a different story. There you go. That's at should. least uh that's the idea. There is some good wine up in that area too. So you that, know, oh, well done. We, I, I'm sure your wives are not going to be like logging on as soon as this comes out. Like I have to listen to them on the call up, but why don't you each give us your 10 second message to, to your wife? Because that we will put on Twitter ahead of time. Aww. Um, 10 seconds. Here we go. Um, Liz, uh, when I married you, very recently in December, Jeff was there. His wife wasn't, long story short. Um, I never thought it was possible to love you as much. Um, you really opened my eyes to what a mom should be. And I couldn't be happier that Cam has a mother like you. Oh, you. Mother's Day. Bravo, bravo. That's tough to Kendall, follow. That is tough to follow. Zarek's, Zarek's a good wordsman. Very good wordsman. Kendall, you're the rock of the family. You're the strongest person I know to be able to go through all these changes during these unprecedented times. And I love you so much. You are the best mother to our kids that we could possibly have. And thank you for being the rock of our family. Oh, you say Zarek is the wordsman and he certainly is, but you're also the author, Jeff. <laughs> so you're a wordsman yourself. Yeah. I know we've chatted a little bit about Jeff and we were talking about this off off camera, off pod before we started is everyone, as soon as you talk to anyone and you want to know, have you watched the last dance, the new Michael Jordan documentary? And we're talking about like how Dennis Rodman and all these guys could do whatever they wanted. And, and it's so hard to kind of like be a human and show your personalities. And obviously the two of you have started to scrape the surface of that with your podcast, but how do you kind of balance that? You know, Jeff, I know you've used the word robot that you're so afraid to do something because you don't know what the implications are and you don't want to hear it on social media, but you also want to show who you are as a person. How do you guys balance that on the pod? And I guess in life, as you try to interact with fans, because the both of you seem to do it well, and I know it's hard. Well, we have a really good editor, <laughs> 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 but, uh, but um, no, I mean, it, it does create its challenges because, you know, and part of the reasons Eric and I started the podcast was, we're just two guys that happen to play soccer, right? Like, I think we we realize that we enjoy the same things. Like, we enjoy going out and grabbing a drink. We enjoy these different sports that are on TV. And nowadays, with social media and just how, you know, I guess, like, athletes in general, not necessarily Zarek and I, but athletes in general are kind of put up on this pedestal where you're not supposed to slip up or you're not supposed to be, you know, human in a way. But now with the whole like more than an athlete movement that's kind of going on and, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're seeing, and I, we were talking about this, but you're seeing a guy like LeBron James kind of be the face of, hey, I could do other things and still be Have really good Have a glass of red job. wine. Exactly. So now that he's kind of, he's kind of paved the way for that. Thank you, and LeBron. And now it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, seriously. And now it's, it's, it's kind of makes everything a little more available for, you know, us to go grab a beer with some fans or you know, just kind of be more of ourselves uh, when we're off the soccer field, if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I, I go ahead, Zarek. I was just going to say to piggyback off that um, ultimately, um, you know, watching the last dance, uh, I, I connect with Dennis on a bunch yes! of levels. Can you become the Dennis Rodman of MLS, please? Well, that's very, it's very high standard. But the yes. idea is that Dennis was is a guy who knew his role took his role seriously and let the Valeris or Minotas and Quintero, let them do that. Even Scotty Pippen, let those guys do their job. And I'm just going to work hard. You know what you're going to get from me. And then you go from there. And I think that when it comes to expressing yourself or having a beer, you know, athletes are usually viewed as being 
machines. You know, you're supposed to eat well and watch film 24 seven and then perform. And if you don't, then you suck. So <laughs> I think that you have to show that first and foremost, you do, you are a good professional. And I would hope that if you would ask our teammates about Jeff and I, how we handle ourselves in the locker room with our workouts, you know, how we viewed if we're professional, then you're allowed that rope, you're allowed more rope. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easier for guys like Jordan to do that because you can do whatever you want. And as long as you go out and score 30 points, it's great. But I think when you show that you can handle your business on the field in some way or another and give 110% and your teammates can rely on you, then if you're caught having a beer, no one cares as much because they know that these are two separate aspects in your work life and your, your life outside of that are completely separate. I love that you said that because in in the last dance, Michael Jordan kind of basically alludes to just that. He was said, you know, Dennis Rodman, let him go to Vegas. Let him. He's going to come back and he's going to be exact. He's going to be here with us, like, and he's going to get the job done. And I think that's what you just said. It just kind of hits the the nail on the head in that respect. And regards to just getting the job done and and being a good teammate. And you brought up sort of what goes on in, in the locker room. And I know, I know just from based on our contacts that we, that we have, like you are two of the most, uh, I like beloved and likable guys in locker room, two mm -hmm. of the best locker room guys, um, that we, that we know of. And Jeff, you, um, you have a, a, a story from your, your RSL days that I, you kind of hinted at in our little like pre-production meeting that you said you were going to save for this. And so I, on that, on that note of being sort of one of those like locker room guys, let's bring everyone together. Jeff, I would like you to, uh, to do a little story time with us if you, yes, if you will. All right. RSL story time. So, <laughs> the, so I appreciate the comment about being good locker room guys though, because people don't understand how important and like, especially young, if you're young in your career and you're not getting playing time, mm -hmm. the importance of being a good locker room will keep giving you opportunities and keep, mm -hmm. it'll keep you in the league. If you have a reputation of being a good locker room guy and you're not necessarily playing a ton, that's like a huge thing. So advice for younger guys. Life out lessons. There. So obviously like RSL days, Romano's a starter and you know, you have this established group of veterans that are in there. And it's a team that, you know, it's a team that expects to win championships and they've had the same locker room for a really long time. So, but when I got in there, you know, I was just excited to be on the team and I was just excited to be part of the locker room. And my, my background is from all different types of sports, right? But like one of my favorite sports to watch is baseball and my favorite team, the Rays, one of the things that they always did, like after big wins was they would turn the lights off, hit the music everybody cracks a beer and it's just, you know, before the media comes in, before you go out to your family, you just pretty much have like a little 10 minute party with the team to celebrate, to celebrate the win before, you know what I mean? Before all the, the madness starts and before we all have to leave and go on their own way. And I always thought that that was a, a cool way to do team bonding. So there was one, there was like one stretch of home games. It was pretty funny because like I got every, I actually got everybody those uh, Saturdays are for the boys shirts. You know what I'm talking about <laughs> back in the day. Yep. So I, I had them. I had before Barstool like blew up. I had them send me the Saturdays are for the boys shirts. Nice. And I and it was a big game on a Saturday night versus Chicago. Like we had to win. And after I put them all in the locker, and I was like, hey, this game, like Saturday, this game is about us. Like this game is about this locker room. So I handed out all the shirts. I had the kit man at the time, like pick up three or four cases of beer. So <laughs> after the game, when we won, I tried to get it going where I was just like throwing around beer in the Ooh. locker room. Like people weren't even looking at me and I'm like chucking beers at them. Like, Hey, we got to celebrate. Like we got a party. And then it lasted like, it had like two weeks of success. And then, <laughs> and then it didn't, I don't know. It didn't stick the way that I thought it would. Cause I, you know, if you're a guy that doesn't play much, after the game, you're just like, hey, let's party. We won. Yeah, but right, it, didn't, right. it, didn't, yeah, it didn't have the, the lasting effects that I hoped it would, but Aww. I definitely, I went for it. I definitely tried to uh, turn it into a party. You were trying to be like the hype man, yeah, bringing everybody effort, together. Man. You mentioned like the locker room and what's okay and what's not okay and everything like that. What was the vibe amongst the team? Like, how are things different when you guys had like Caleb Porter? He won it with Portland Timbers in 2015. And then all of a sudden, like, Geo comes in. And things don't maybe start off so great. And then all of a sudden he takes everyone on an incredible run. 
Um, like, what was the difference between the two? Would you guys take from them? What can you Gio's tell us about man. each of them to make fun of them? Gio's a hype man. G- really? You don't oh. see- I guess it's like a fiery South American. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have. In him. But what I'll do is I'll take Caleb since I'm the Akron guy and it only makes sense that I take Caleb. Okay, you um, have the deep history. Yeah, for sure. Um, Caleb, um, I would say, well, has, has changed over the course of, you know, time from being a college coach to being a pro coach. There's a lot of different aspects that might change. For example, I remember in college we beat, I think it was FAU. We beat a team 3-0. And we talked for two hours after the game about how we didn't <laughs> play. No, seriously, we didn't play to the level in which he had envisioned. And yes, we won, but it wasn't good enough the way in which we mm. won. And that was, you know, uh, that was pretty frequent in college because the standard was so much higher um, than I think some schools just because of, I mean, Akron was, we were pretty, pretty good. Um, and Caleb is, um, <laughs> oh, here we go, oh, Jeff. Akron. <laughs> um, but I would say Caleb is, Caleb is a little bit more reserved, I would say emotionally than Gio in the locker room. Gio is, wears his heart on his sleeve consistently. And, you know, there's there's been games where we've won and he's come up behind me and hugged me and Man. almost took the breath out of, like, my lungs because he's, he's excited and you can see it. Just look up goal celebrations. That whenever mm. the Timbers score in the sideline cam, that's all you have to look at. Uh, one, one of the questions that, that Jill and I had – talked about this. So last week we did, we were on a broadcast of, we've been doing these MLS classics remix Mm -hmm. of uh, classic MLS games. And last year we were on the call for last year's round one matchup between Seattle and Dallas. And we got into this like crazy, great conversation with Christian Roldan and Reggie Cannon about guys who were on like, that they've played with that they consider to be completely underrated. Yep. Which according, and which it, I feel like was half their teams for both. Of them. Yes, and and it was and it was fascinating, but it was a, it it led to it led to what was ultimately a really really great discussion. Yeah. And so one guy that like in Portland that I feel like com- is is his quality is is there and it's there for everyone to see and we can talk about that. But I feel like he doesn't get the the love the respect that he should is uh, Diego Chara and. I know you both have experience playing with him and I just want to get your take. Do you, do you agree that he's underrated and also like what makes him so good? And then third, how do you actually say his last name? Do you say Chara or Chara? That's what we really want to know. Chara? What's Chara? Chara. (laughs) Chara. Guys, that's how it's like officially said. That is That's what like the Spanish pronunciation. Yes, a, it's like it's like it's Chiron. If like, you I'm listen like, to play by play, I kind of feel like a like a. It depends. Chara, you Chara, can, like. Well, you can't say Diego. You have to say you can't Chara. say Diego Chara. Like you're saying Chara. it like you're saying the English first name <laughs> with the Spanish last name. You're right. But then it's like you say Diego, Diego Chara. Diego. Then it's like the Spanish first name and the. Americanized last name. So right, we like of, Diego Chara, but we didn't want to. Yeah, we didn't want to not I, be correct. Well, we you didn't want to not Diego, be politically. Diego Chara or Diego Chara. There's different. Nice. I'm a real that Diego Chara, Chara kind of girl. So I, I honestly <laughs> I think, and this is just maybe me being pessimistic, but I think players are ultimately underrated if they're not liked by their foes. So and Chara's he's hated known, by his foes. He's well, hated by his foes. But but if you ask them, hey. Would you like to have him behind you? If you ask Christian Rodan that, at Reggie Cannon, would you like to have him in the midfield? I guarantee you nine out of 10 people would say, mm-hmm, I'll take him in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. So I think that people get underrated because they're not necessarily uh, liked because of the, the style in which they play. So for example, Valeri, he's not because he's like, yay, like I'm Diego. I got Connie here. It's fantastic. It's great. Chara is very, very, Chara is underspoken and gets a bunch of yellow cards for kicking the other team's number 10. So you get protective, but you know, like ultimately I'll take him on my team in a heartbeat. Um, so I think that maybe uh, I think people hold that aspect against him just because of, you know, I think he leads, the, I think he has the most yellow cards of all time. Maybe him and Beckerman. Amazing. Jeff. 
he's close. So he and I were actually looking at this one day, and Becker, he's like really close to Beckerman, but Beckerman's played over like a hundred more games than him or something. I don't know the actual. <laughs> like a zillion games. But like, yeah. like Beckerman's in front, but the amount of games played in the MLS is just, just like some astronomical number. But oh, no, I mean, I think that the thing about Chara is he just has one of those roles where he does the he does the things that if you're not, uh, like a so- like if you're not a soccer like junkie or you know what I mean, you don't notice the things that he does and how important it is mm-hmm. to the team in general. And you know, he's been I mean, he's been the backbone of Portland for so long. But one of the cool things about Chara is he's very soft spoken and he's not a big, you know what I mean. He's not a really big out there in the media type of guy. But I mean, he has four kids, and he's one of the nicest, best human That's beings. That's what you hear behind mm-hmm. the scenes that all you, the time. Yeah, like he's one of the best human beings I've ever, I've ever had huh. a teammate. Like I've ever had as a teammate, mm-hmm. and you know, he smiles all the time, and he and the way that he plays, I can see how it gets under fans' skins because like he'll foul a player and he'll he'll have that smile, and I don't know, it just kind of I think it comes off the wrong way if you don't know him. But that's really who he is. Like he just loves playing the game. But he's just like a very good human being as well. So that's like for me, that was the part of Char that I didn't know before I got to Portland. And as I've gotten to know him, that's been the most impressive part for me. Um, Jeff, we discussed it earlier in the pod. But of course, we can't let you go. You've been getting so much notoriety, not just in the U.S., but across the world um, for your Had to Be Told series. Uh, You put some of your books online for free during this time where parents want to rip their heads out and they are like, what do I do with my kid? Oh wait, Jeff's going to read to them for eight minutes. Okay. That buys me a little bit of time. Um, but then most recently you've donated a thousand of your books as people try to maneuver their way through quarantine drink. Um, can you tell us a little bit about before we head to the game about your had to be told series and kind of how that whole idea came to be? Yeah. So we had the idea to, it was when my daughter was born. Um, and you know, there's a, there's a really long, like there's a really long backstory, but I won't, uh, I don't need to go all into it. I know we're going over time here, but so pretty much, you know, when my daughter was born, one of the things that in my family, you know, with my parents is sports always kind of sports is always that thing that, that brings us back to one another. You know, we could be doing, we could be doing anything. Uh, you know, my brother in college, whatever, like we're all, throughout the world doing our different things. But if there was a game on or, or a, something big going on with sports and a team that we all fell in love with together, it always kind of brought us back together. You know what I mean? So I wanted to share that with my daughter. And I, I, there were a couple of things that happened. And I just kind of had the idea to, you know, what's a good way to get somebody to fall in love with sports or get somebody to fall in love with that team. And for me, I just had the idea to come up with these historical moments that, I felt like should be passed down through the generations, right? So when the Cubs won the World Series, my daughter was just born. And I was thinking to myself, Chicago. you know, it's, you big, like the Cubs? She's a yeah. Chicago girl. Oh, oh no, you... lean back, lean back. Yeah, there you go. So Perfect. for those I'll of you that you don't know, book. Susanna has I'll a Chicago a Cubs tattoo on her ankle. Which That's great. It says so 2016. Really like so you'll really like this story. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, of course it is. That's the best memory the Cubs fans have. If only she had some books. <laughs> so, yeah, so like, no, so like when the Cubs won the World Series and my daughter was just born, I remember watching it and thinking to myself, well, my daughter and all these Cubs fans that are just now born aren't going to know all the misery and all the, you know, <laughs> the grandparents and the parents and all the things that they went through and what this moment actually means. All they're going to know is that the Cubs won the World Series and woohoo, like go Cubs. But so I thought it would be cool to come up with a way to, you know, create that fun story that parents will love to read, that kids will like to read, that retells the history. And, you know, it it gives parents a way to share what that moment really meant for them. And hopefully, you know, it creates kind of that bond between the parents and the kids and they fall in love with that team together. And, you know, it's just a story that we felt like that's where we got the name of it. It had to be told is these are historical sports moments that we feel like fans should be able to pass down through the generations and share with their kids. But we wanted to write a book in a way that, you know, it's fun for the parents to read. It's fun for the kids to read. And hopefully it helps kind of create that bond of loving a team and loving a sport so that it's something that carries them, you know, throughout the rest of their lives. Do you ever think about doing an Eagles one? Oh, 
I thought about listen. I listen. There's no shortage of good sports stories. Minnesota there's Vikings no have a lot of heartbreak. The Eagles, the Eagles have never won a Super Bowl up until Foles, oh, and the backup know. quarterback coming in, the Philly better. Philly. Come on, we have to just come on, Jeffy. Do and it. Then, now, the, the, the bear, now the now the Bears and the Phillies. Foles. The Phillies won too. Know, there's no shortage yeah. of good sports stories. That's a, that's a fun thing about it, and you know oh. we're uh, you know we want to we want to be able to write these. Like I love writing them. They're so much fun. But we want to be able to do these for all the fan bases because. I'm sure Zarek would love to read that Eagles book to his son one day. And, you know, it's just a cool, it's a cool thing for fans to pass down. So that's really what we're trying to create there. It's, and they it's sponsor so cool. the pod. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah. perfect. So it's my, wife, it's, it's, my wife and I, my wife and I have the publishing company and it's like, so we're a big pod sponsor, you know, yeah, there we brought, you go. In, that big, we we love brought in that big endorsement. Yeah. Listen, whatever, <laughs> we'll take it, whatever, it, whatever works. No, that's an, it's, a, it's such an amazing concept. And like that tattoo that I showed you, I got that tattoo with my dad. He has the exact same that's tattoo cool. because we had made a promise. Family to bonds years right? ago that if the Cubs ever won it, we would get this tattoo. He's, he's 70 years old. The man has never had a tattoo in his life. And so we did that together and it's such a shared experience. And I think you, telling have allowing families to tell those stories that mean so much to to people is really really special and a great way to engage a younger generation in sports and and get them into it and i love it so well thank you well I, have a, I have a tattoo Bravo. i have a i have a sports tattoo let's see it that i you got do? for the rays making the world series can i show Where? it yeah yeah <gasps> oh, <laughs> right that's a oh, for a tattoo God. reveal on the call what i was expecting <laughs> Not oh, that is what a good Jeffy, place Jeff. to put it because no one will ever see it. That was the I've key. I've seen that one. That was wow. the key. Before we start our game, um, we have a, an episode coming out yes. of To My Hero. Oh, and yeah. you And you had, oh gosh, this was such a cool thing that we saw a few weeks ago on social media. There was a couple, the, uh, the Connors, is it? The Connors. The, yeah, the Connors. Kelly and Albert Connors. So Kelly is... In Houston, she's going through chemotherapy. Her her husband Albert is a huge uh, Houston Dynamo fan, and he waited outside the hospital because he could not go in because mm-hmm. of all the the res- restrictions, and held a sign basically saying like I'm sitting out here for you, but so I'm nice. with you in mm-hmm. there. Thank you, thank you to all the healthcare workers. I mean, it was I have goosebumps saying it, it was just one of these beautiful. Jeff's beautiful laughing because we're getting emotional. No, no, it's incredible. It could be the no. I'm laughing. Too. I'm Who sorry. Zarek, Zarek's one of the best human beings in the world. But I was laughing because I just see the straw come in the picture, and you're like, <laughs> but, yeah. But this, you're you're featuring this this story on the episode of To My Hero, mm-hmm. and I I just want to know what was that what was that experience like in kind of sharing that, and why did it resonate so much with you? Um, I think. Uh... Well, the original story resonated a lot to me because of just a, a husband's support for their wife. Um, my wife's a nurse and to, to know what they go through, um, you know, throughout Liz's pregnancy, she was basically going in and doing 12 hour shifts up until she was eight months pregnant. And I used to have to drive her to work because we had one car and all these different things. Um, so just the the things like that resonate very highly with me. And obviously, uh, sadly, Kelly has cancer and um the, the fact that Albert was going through these different lengths and it was by chance that he sat outside and her room was right there. So when she reached out and looked, took the picture, um, it, I think the story hit home for a lot of people because, you know, sadly, cancer has affected my family's, um, you know, my family dearly and I'm sure a lot of people. Um, and just uh, to, to see... Um, like I said, something you do for your wife and the mother of your children is, is special. And I'm not gonna, I don't want to say too much because it's an episode, but I got to have a little quick chat with them. Uh, I ended up literally having to change my shirt afterwards cause I was nervous and I was sweating. Um, uh, but oh, Albert and Kelly, adorable. but Albert and Kelly are incredible people and Kelly's a fighter. She's one mm-hmm. of the strongest people I know. Um, so tune in, I don't want to say too much, but it just, uh, um, it gives you goosebumps and, it's, you know, it's not about me. It's about the, the fans in this league that are so special. And it's pretty cool to highlight just, you know, one of those in Houston. I love that so much. We're I just, so thinking it. of them. I love seeing yeah, them incredible. on social media. Well, and it's, it's, it's MLS. This week is MLS unites for our uh, frontline um, 
and necessary workers. And so this is a great little like way to to showcase that as well. And also your your wife, Zarek Liz, for doing the job that she does. Thank you, Liz. Yes, big, big ups to all our our hospital workers workers. Liz rules, obviously. Okay, so it's game time, and we are going to play the pyramid game, which is basically we're going to pair off into different partnerships here, and we are going to, we, we have words, and then we describe them to our partner, and they have 30 seconds to guess as many as they can right, and... Round one's going to be 30 seconds. Round two is 30 seconds. Round three is only 20 seconds. So Ooh. it goes goes down and then the points go up. So in the in round one, Jill, I am going to be giving you clues okay. as to the words. And Jeff, you are going to give Zarek clues. Okay, your first word, LA Galaxy versus LAFC is also called? Uh, El Trafico. Yes. Um, this is the mascot for Seattle's MLS team. Fish? Yes. Eh, it's got a name. Pass. Pass. I never okay. know their names. Adidas. Adidas is is known for their what is their iconic look like the um on the shoes on superstars. On Three superstars. stripes. Three stripes. Yes. Um, this was in Orlando last year. You and Thunder. I were there. Stop. No, you you Stop. and I were there. No. It's an all star game. World Fireworks. Two. You guys are. That was terrible. What is the Sounders mascot? Have you guys ever played this game before? He cuts the log slabs. Uh, Joey. Timber Joey. Married to Posh Spice. What? Dave Beckham. Married to Posh Spice. David Beckham. Uh, Let's see. Marco Farfan. uh, Homegrown. Homegrown. MLS Homegrown. If you're not from America, you occupy this type of spot on a roster. Uh, A foreign spot. A um, uh, starts with uh, international roster spot. Boom, nailed it. We just talked about a most underrated player in the MLS. Chara, Diego Chara. Diego Valeri, 2017. MVP. What did he win? MVP. If you if you win all the, all the trophies. Stop. Trouble. All right. Oh my all right, God. you guys were decent, I guess. You guys are really good. That was good. That was really good. <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> was really good. I'm sweating. Just just to recap, uh, Jeff and Zarek both got 60 points each. Jill, we got 20. I'm fine with that. Mm. Oh, I get it. I'm not a high Robin. achiever. I got it. The most popular show on Netflix right now. Oh, God. Uh, Tiger King. Royal. Good. Um, Julie, defensive mid, is married to who plays for Eagles? Julie what? Hurts. No, who's she married to? Oh, um, oh, God. What's his first name? <laughs> it's Hurts. Pass, pass, pass. It's not the Dynamo. The Dynamo's women team is called what? The Dynamo's women team is called Dash. What? Houston Dash. Okay, cool. Who's Superman on our team? Wait. Oh, um, um, Minotas. No. <laughs> no. <who is> it? <laughs> Cam Newton. <laughs> Christian Ramirez. Oh, oh yeah. I forgot he's on Houston now. God. All right. I like our chances. I like our chances. Uh, an opportunity in the season to get new players. Transfer it's window. In- yes. Um, it's five letters, and it's the slogan for the Timbers. RCTID. Yes. Uh, he plays the guitar, and he's from Argentina. Valeri. <laughs> um, he just came to the Buccaneers. Tom Brady. Yeah. Um, Zarek has a... Mustache. No, a baby, <laughs> but another word for a baby. Uh, infant. Actually, you have this. Jeff, you have... Toddler. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Newborn. <laughs> You can say five letters? That doesn't seem right. That seems <laughs> That's the rules. I didn't make them up. The best supporters in the league. Timbers Army. There we go. Uh, just joined Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. Gronk, Gronk, Gronk. <laughs> okay, uh, you, U.S. Women's National Team player. She plays on the Thorns. Um, she's amazing, super skillful. Tobin Heath, Com- Tobin Heath. Yes. Um, oh, the, the Michael Jordan documentary that we're all watching right the now. The Last Dance. Yes. Stop, and, stop. And it, Stop. Oh, God. Okay. That, was, that was better. That was yeah, good. We went four, we four for four. That was great. Okay. You're like feeding. I think I win, right? Wrong. I have to win. Oh, I have to win. It's a beer and it's the sponsor for MLS. Heineken. Comes in a green bottle. Heineken. Yes. Um, a female player uh, for Houston. <laughs> Richard Bailey. From the stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Jeff is uh, Jeff is the winner. Jeff wins at 140. Pyramid. Well done, Jeffy. So well done.
Well done, Jeff. Cheers to you. And uh, the silver, the silver lining. <laughs> the unprecedented the, silver lining. <laughs> the unprecedented silver lining. Is that this was our first ever um, yes! virtual four person pod. And uh, I don't know if you guys know this. We, we don't like to brag, but today is our first year anniversary. It is. So oh, really? thank you. Thank you for coming to our one year anniversary party. May the fourth be it. with you. <laughs> well jill how much fun was that i, oh, I wish i could do that every day oh my gosh that just felt like such a good quality hang with like some buds you know mm, good for the soul we were just like playing some trivia at the bar hang with and... our two best friends zarek oh, and jeff real cash that was, that was amazing so uh, a huge thank you to zarek and jeff for their time and also big shouts out to um kevin acevedo of uh, the Timbers for for putting that all together and making it happen for us. That was so much fun. And once again, we've got a lot coming up for you. So no need to worry if you're missing out on MLS content because we have got you covered, including MLS Idol. Uh, we are Ta-da. going to – I know, I know. It's been very, very exciting. We are two weeks in. So uh, this coming Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Twitter and Facebook. You can watch. You can see who the week two winner will be. It's going to be very exciting. Week one winner was Rolf Felcher of the LA Galaxy. Had a little chat with him. Fantastic hair. Um, but, yes, we've got some brand brand new contestants, brand new guest judge. It's going to be great. And then you guys can get in and vote. Use the hashtag MLS Idol and uh, the last name of the contestant. And you can be a part of be a part of MLS Idol history, if you will. So, yeah, MLS Idol has been a very welcomed addition to kind of like the MLS fun. world. Sus. You've you I got to say, I think you were made for this this role amongst amongst us many others jill stop it thank Um, you something else you can do to help you unwind on your friday four o'clock pacific seven o'clock eastern uh we have the mls happy hour no the mls call up happy hour (laughs) forgot the name of our podcast on our first anniversary could you believe it yes i can the call up happy hour uh where it's basically this but it's just sitting back hanging having a glass of wine talking a little mls with Susanna Collins and I. That's on Friday. Don't forget, though, on Thursday, you've got extra time. Oh. The first 24 Mount Rushmores are apparently complete, if you can believe it. Um, oh, but then they add in plus three clubs that no longer exist. So now the fun really begins. Over the next m- month or so, extra time will be crowning the extra time greatest MLS team of all time. This Thursday, they will be adding eight teams to create a 32-team bracket. I and love of course, that. MLS Classics remixes continue, which we've had a blast to be a part of. This one coming up is the 1996 Metro Stars against the Tampa Bay Mutiny. Check out wow. these names that are on here. Blasts from the past, but also guys that are now in new roles in the present. Including Who we just one. talked about. Gio Savarese, Miles Joseph, Tab Ramos. Oh, look at, can you believe that? Tab, Tab Ramos and Gio Savarese. I know. Head coaches now for the Portland Timbers and the Houston Dynamo. It's like we wrote this episode it's, up. It literally is. Did it know. That's hosted by Andrew Wiebe. Wednesday, 4 Eastern Time, YouTube and Facebook. We love that. So much good stuff coming up for you. And guys, for our uh, our little MLS call-up happy hour on Friday, we've been playing games every week. Ah, uh, yeah. So if there is a game that you think would work in that sort of format with the, the please. Instagram live, <laughs> please right tell us because we are just – we're literally – scraping at the bottom of the barrel here let us know what you think but definitely join us because it's a good time and uh i mean we have a good time yeah we do (laughs) which you know is anybody surprised i'm gonna say no (laughs) but that's it that's a another another quarantine episode in the books our one year anniversary i feel like this was such a great way to celebrate with zarek and jeff and my girl Jillian Sakovitz, who is the wind beneath everybody's wings, let's be honest. Oh, she's stop. just the best. I didn't prepare a speech. She's the best. She's Seriously. just the best. I just want to say, I want to I want to get it out there on the record. Oh my God. I'm, that, here. I'm no, too emotional. She has been my rock since <laughs> I started at MLS. And I love her and I love this podcast so much. And on our one year anniversary, Zarek and Zarek and Jeff got to do it. So I'm gonna You're do right. it too. 
Jillian Sackovitz, <laughs> you are my rock. You are the the Sauvignon Blanc in my glass that I cherish and love so much. And I just, I couldn't do it without you. And I'm so lucky to be your pod partner. Sam, did you write this before we oh, started? I didn't. That was completely off You are catching off me off guard here, girl. I'm, <laughs> you know I'm emotionally unstable during quarantine. But we all to, are. But truthfully, truthfully, to echo exactly what you were saying, you're the opposite of the melted ice cubes and tequila in my glass at the moment <laughs> because you are so solid and you know MLS related or not life related, I can call you on a whim and you're not only going to pick up, but you're going to have great advice. You're going to have stuff to tell me about. Um, and you're also just an excellent partner in terms of bouncing creative ideas off of each other, uh, substantial ideas off of each other and all the things that go into this podcast. And I value you so, Ugh. so, so much. You are an absolute rock star. And I always am so in awe by the energy and passion you bring into everything that we do. So Crying. thank you. Crying. I love this love fest so much. Happy I never first. Wanted to is this what a first anniversary is always anniversary. like? <laughs> Happy first anniversary. Happy first anniversary.